Good morning. It's um, good to be with you again this morning. We're building on the four pillars of Christian business leaders, healthy Christian business leaders. Um, number one, healthy relationships and biblical financial values, biblical spirituality, and balanced living. Our focus this week is on pillar number four, which is balanced living. Morning, Jeremy. Good to have you on here this morning. The series is called Resting Without Guilt. Yesterday we talked about the day God rested. And today we're talking about the actual word Sabbath. And um, there's much written about the Sabbath day. Um, when you do some research on the word, what you find very quickly is that some um, scholars do not completely agree on the origin of the word Sabbath. Um, the first time that the word appears in the Bible is actually in Exodus chapter 16. So it's, it's not anywhere found in Genesis and uh, not until after the people have left Egypt and are in the wilderness and they're hungry and God sends manna and God sends enough for them to collect each day, except for on the sixth day, God sends enough for Seven, the seventh day as well, and they're to pick up enough for the sixth day and the seventh day. And that's the only time that it doesn't go bad, is the seventh day's food they collect on the sixth so that they can rest on the seventh day. What is interesting, though, is that Adam and Eve were never commanded to keep the Sabbath, nor were they told uh, even to follow God's example of resting on the seventh day. We, we don't see that anywhere. You know, in the scriptures, we don't see any reference to that. Um, we don't read of Noah, you know, um, working on the ark six days and resting on the seventh day. We don't read that. It's, it's not there. Um, we don't even have mention of Abraham keeping a Sabbath day. When Jacob uh, runs for his life from his brothers, in, from his brother in Genesis chapter 28, verse 22, he makes a promise to God. And his promise to God is, God, I will tithe to you and I will worship you. But again, even there, you know, I mean, this would have been a perfect place for him to say, and I will keep the Sabbath day. But there's no mention of a Sabbath day um, in that commitment that he makes to God. Now, there are lots of misconceptions about the Sabbath. Uh, and this may have led for some to struggle with this whole idea of resting because of the, the rules and regulations that, that sometimes we grow up with when it comes to the Sabbath day. Well, I grew up in a home where Sunday was considered to be the Sabbath day, which is a misconception. Um, and all uh, we were allowed to do on the Sunday was go to church twice and eat um, too much and then have a nap, and that was it. And um, you might be able to watch a bit of TV. Um, you certainly could read a book and that kind of stuff. But but beyond that, you know, you basically weren't allowed to uh, do kind of the normal things that you would do throughout the week. Um, the seventh day, though, we really need to recognize that the seventh day, the day of rest, was God's gift to humanity. And it was a gift given to us right from the get-go. But what is interesting as well is right from the very beginning of time, we had a hard time embracing the idea of resting. And so we, you know, Adam and Eve in the garden, you know, they may have done that. We're not told that they did. But uh, then they come out of the garden and sin, of course, has entered the world. And now they have to work hard just to make um, enough to eat. And... Um, it's not mentioned that they at any point in time took a day off from that to be able to rest. Now, there is a lot more that could be said about the Sabbath. And um, some of it is actually, uh, you know, can be divisive. People get can get quite upset about this. And in the end, um, we would still miss what the main point is. Um, the main point is God gave us an example of resting. We talked a bit about that yesterday. Uh, tomorrow we're going to talk more about what resting is, and I think it may surprise you as to what resting is. And I'm not going to give too much of that away today. We'll talk about that more tomorrow. 
Um, but here's a question for you. When's the last time you took a day off? You just literally had a time when you say, you know what? I'm going to take this time and I'm just going to um, rest. I'm just going to take the day off and, uh, and not be involved in um, any kind of work activity. Uh, when's the last time that you did that? Um, do you carve out time each day to rest? Um, you know, every day we need, like, it, it's one thing to have the day of rest. And we, I think it's important that we do have a day of rest. And we'll talk more about that throughout this week. Um, but the other thing is, is that throughout each day, it's important to have time of rest. And, and that time of rest, you know, obviously is, you know, when we go to bed at night and we go to sleep. But um, there, there, I believe there needs to be other times when we have some time, downtime. And so I want to encourage you in that. So today, um, you know, that's my encouragement for you is simply to, uh, you know, include some downtime. You know, um, maybe it's just where you get a chance to sit with a good cup of coffee, if you like coffee or tea or whatever it is that you enjoy, that you're just going to get a chance to sit and just take a deep breath and just have some downtime. And, and I would encourage you today to, to really think about um, having some downtime. And then also, uh, may, may we plan, um, you know, may we plan our next day off. Uh, so oftentimes we don't take time off because we just simply don't plan for it. And so my encouragement is, would you plan for uh, some time off, maybe a day off, that you just say, you know what, that's going to be the day that I take off. And uh, I would strongly encourage you to consider that. So have a good day and Lord bless you. And I'll see you again tomorrow.